Hello everyone and welcome to the Learn It YouTube channel. My name is Kara Clifford and we are going to be talking about working with animating charts in PowerPoint today. I encourage you all to like and subscribe to our channel for more instructional videos like this for end user applications and all things that you use every day. My name is Kara Clifford and we're going to jump right into PowerPoint and taking a look at some helpful ways to animate charts. One of the things that I see a lot in presentations is people are putting up large amounts of data, but they're not able to control what the audience is viewing. So one easy way to do that is to animate the charts in PowerPoint, showing only the series that you want to speak about, and then having a nice smooth transition to the next section. So let's go ahead and move over to PowerPoint and take a look at how we can do this right now. Here I am in PowerPoint 2016. When I open up the application, it brings me to this home page where I see s templates that I can use for my presentation. I can choose one of these, or if my company or organization has a template, I can use that. But I'm going to just open up a blank presentation. When I'm brought into PowerPoint, it brings me to this PowerPoint slide where I can put in the title of my presentation. And I can add additional new slides by going up to the Home tab and selecting the bottom half of the new slide, where I can choose any of the slide types available to me. I'm going to select Title and Content, as this slide type has a placeholder for a chart right in the center, making it easy for me to add this chart to my presentation. I'm going to select Insert Chart, and what that does is it opens up a window of new charts. Now, in this version of PowerPoint, we have a number of new chart types that weren't available in earlier iterations of Office, charts that can add a lot of value. That being said, these chart types are available in Excel too, and oftentimes that data is already in Excel, so it makes sense just to build the chart there and then copy it over to PowerPoint. But if you're building a chart from PowerPoint directly, or if you're pasting it from Excel, how you animate the chart is the same. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and quickly create a chart so we have something to animate. From the chart types, I can choose any of the available chart types from line charts or pie charts, stock charts, radar charts, tree maps, and more. And there's a lot of great options here. But for this example, I'm going to just use a basic column chart, as that's a fairly standard chart type. When I choose OK, it brings the chart into my presentation. And it gives me a window to add data or to change data. So again, if you had the information already in Excel, you might just want to copy the chart from Excel and paste it into PowerPoint. But I can also build the chart here. I can change and update the data sources. So now that I've updated my chart a little bit, I've added some people's names so we know that whose sales those are, are. I've added the first quarter so I know that this is Q1 sales for our different salespeople. And we'll say that these are all in thousands. I could even go in and change the numbers or add additional salespeople or additional months simply by clicking into the next column. But I'm going to go ahead and call it a day closing out this window. If for some reason I need to get back to edit that information, from my chart tools, I have an edit data button. Now the chart tools that you find up at the top are only here if you click on the chart. So if I move away and add a chart title or a, chart, a slide title, I no longer see those chart tools. I must select the chart to get the tools to work with that object. From the Design tab, I can edit the data, and this will bring me back to that Edit Data in Excel, and it'll launch that little window. Or I can edit data in that smaller Excel window. So either one works fine. Now, what I wanted to focus on is how to animate this chart. So if I want to talk about one of our salespeople before moving on to the rest of them, I can have my audience focus on just those numbers. 
when you place a chart on a screen in the middle of a meeting, people aren't going to help but be able to look at everything and all the information being displayed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to control the messaging by animating the chart so that when I, the presenter, am ready to speak about the next section, I simply hit the space bar, the arrow key, or my mouse to move to the next animation. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now and you'll see just how easy it is. To animate the chart, I'm simply going to go to the Animations tab of the ribbon. From the Animations tab of the ribbon, I have a number of different animation options. If I expand the More option, I can see that I have entrance, entrance animations, emphasis animations, and exit animations, in addition to mo motion paths. Now, with most animation, less is more. You don't want to distract your audience from the messaging. So I'm going to choose a very simple animation that allows me, again, to control how these series appear in my chart. I'm going to choose a simple appear. And when I do, it quickly makes my chart flash. And I can now see that I have a single box, a number one, showing me that there is one animation in this chart. If I put my presentation into presentation mode, Nothing happens on the slide until I click the space bar or the down arrow, and then my entire chart appears. But I want to keep it from all displaying at once. I want to bring in just Adam's sales, and then Bob's, and then Sally's, and then Susan's. So I'm going to hit the escape key, taking myself out of presentation mode. And from the animations tab of the ribbon, just to the right of all of my animation options, there is a button called effect options. The default when animating a chart is to animate it as one object, as we just saw. But I can choose from a number of different options, including by series. When I do that, you can see that instead of just having a single animation on this slide, I now have four animations. If I place my slide, my presentation into presentation mode, with my first click, I get the chart. My next click, I get all of the January sales. My second, third click, I get all of the February. And then my fourth click, all of March's sales, which is working great if I want to focus on talking about quarter to quarter. But my hope was to animate by individual. So rather than choosing by series, I'm going to choose by category. I'm going to go ahead and change, put the slide back into presentation mode. And here I can see with the space bar or down arrow, the chart appears. I get Adam's sales, Bob's sales, Sally's sales, and finally Susan's sales, our top salesperson. Being able to control your messaging when presenting is a really helpful way to ensure that the audience is paying attention to your message and not being distracted by the rest of the chart. Now there's other things that we can do to ensure that this chart is valuable to our audience. We can add things like data labels, we can ensure that there's a chart title and a legend, and all of those options can be done by using the tools in the ribbon or in the top right corner of the chart. But when it comes to animating a series, it helps to, again, show just one section of your chart at a time. I'm going to move back and just show you a couple other options we have. When selected on my chart, I can also choose effect options such as by element in series or by element in category. If I wanted to spend more time talking about each month of Adam's sales, I'm going to want to choose this by element in category option. You can see now I have 13 different animations in my presentation. If I go into slideshow mode, with each click now, I just get one section of data, so Adam's January sales then is February sales, March sales, Bob's January sales, and so on. Now, something like this is definitely going to take a long time to click through. I mean 13 clicks to get through the entire set of animations. In most situations, I wouldn't recommend having that many animations in a slide unless you really wanted to focus on the individual elements of a particular category or series. Just be sure to think about your audience, the information that matters most to them. And again, animating is a really great way to control your message. Now, let's say I wanted to add one extra little 
element to this animation. I'm going to add a circle that circles that important piece of information I want to highlight on this slide. So I'm going to add that as one additional animation. You'll see just how easy it is. I'm going to escape out of presentation mode and I'm going to switch back to by category so that each one of my salespeople's data is coming up one at a time. So I have a total of five animations, one for the chart and then one for each of my salespeople. Once I'm done showing all of Susan's sales, what I'd like to do is I'd like to add a circle around Susan's March sales to highlight the fact that Susan is our top salesperson and that her March was our highest grossing month. So I'm going to go over to my Insert tab of the ribbon. And from the Insert tab, I'm going to select a shape. I'm going to choose an oval. And I'm just going to draw it right over the top of Susan's chart. I'm going to adjust it. And to make it make a little bit more sense, I'm going to get rid of that center fill color. So I'm going to go up to the drawing tools that appear whenever I'm selected on an object or a shape like this. And I'm going to choose Shape Fill, No Fill. And then I'm going to change the shape outline to a bright red. Now I can adjust the size of my oval a little bit, just circling it around Susan's March sales. And then what I'm going to do to animate this is I'm going to add an animation. So I'm going to go back to my Animations tab. From my Animations tab, I'm going to select the Add an Animation option. Now, there's a lot of animations to add, and I want to add it at the very end, so that's why I'm choosing this Add Animation option. <clears throat> now, I need to be selected on that object that I want to add as my animation, but it won't let me click into the uh, chart unless I'm also on the chart. So I'm going to choose Add, and add Animation. I'm going to choose Appear. And as soon as I did, I got a lot more animation. So one of the problems that you're going to want to do, uh, you're going to want to double check, is you're going to want to make sure that you have the right sequence of animations. And it's hard to do when you just see those numbers. You don't necessarily know what they're connected to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back, and I'm going to open up the animation pane. The animation pane shows you all of the animations within the presentation or within this particular slide. I can get a preview and have it play all. They play really fast. I can have it get rid of additional animations by right-clicking and choosing Remove. And I can reorder these animations. So I can grab this most recent animation that I've added, and I can even drag it up to the top. Now I'm going to remove all of those, and I'm going to choose select my uh, chart. I'm going to choose Add Animation, and I'm going to grab this circle, place it right where I want it to go, and then I'll put it back into presentation mode. Now, the first time I hit play, I can see that the the circle is showing up within this chart before I hit OK. So I'm going to escape out of that, and I recognize I need to get rid of it, that circle. It's not seeing that as a separate animation. So what happens sometimes is the chart get, it gets stuck. So I'm going to start by keeping it outside of the chart. You can see that it's snapping back into place. This is a very common issue. So I'm going to just drag it out, and sometimes what I'll do is I'll even copy it and delete it back in if it keeps doing this. So I'm going to just select Control X, then I'm going to click outside of my chart and use Control V. So now it's moving without snapping back. So what happened is it was getting stuck within the chart itself. So now that I'm not in the chart, you can see that I can use the Add Animation button. I can choose Appear. But because I have all these extra animations, I first want to delete those out. So now I'm selected on this circle. I have my Add Animation button, so I know this is the object that I'm animating. And again, before, it wasn't letting me just grab the circle, which told me that was stuck within the chart itself. 
So I'm going to go choose Add Animation. I'm going to choose Appear. And now I'm going to test out my presentation. So as you can see, very simple to add animation. It's really just a matter of clicking on the object that you want to animate. Remember that the default in PowerPoint when animating a chart is to animate it as one object, so it's going to come in all at once. We use the effect options to be able to animate by series or by a category or even an element in a series if you want to get that granular. We can also add additional elements, but remember, just like you saw, sometimes those objects that you draw within a chart will get stuck. So my recommendation is draw it outside of the chart and then place it on top of the chart and animate that object. And that way it knows that it puts that animation at the very end and that it's adding that circle as an animation. Sometimes I'll use arrows, sometimes I'll simply add a shape over the top of the series. There's all sorts of different ways to add useful visual elements to make emphasis of data within your chart. Thank you guys so much for joining for our presentation on animating charts in PowerPoint. And again, please subscribe to our channel. If you have, uh, haven't liked us, make sure to do that as well. My name is Kara Clifford, and thank you so much for joining the Learn It YouTube channel for our demonstration today. Stay tuned for more, and have a great day.